September 11th, 2001, we just had our 10th anniversary of that. I happened to live three and a half blocks from what became known as Ground Zero. Uh, these, this image was taken outside my dining room window. Uh, the North Tower is on fire. These are 110-story buildings, the World Trade Center towers. Uh, this image is the instant the South Tower was hit. It was hit from the left. You could not see the entry point because we're blocked by this other black building. It's a hotel, a 50-story hotel, which is just kind of in the foreground. You see part of the South Tower punching out. This is before the jet fuel had ignited. And when you ignite jet fuel, you set a deflagration wave, not a, not a, a, a bomb wave. It's a different kind of wave. It's not accompanied by a shock. Uh, this is a split second after that. The fuel has ignited, creating more pressure. And within a split second of that, the entire South Tower was engulfed. And this is fragments of plane and bodies and office coming out the other side. Now, why am I dragging you through this? Uh, okay, 62 minutes later, both buildings had collapsed. And there was blue sky where there was once these buildings. This is directly outside of my apartment building. And the emergency vehicles had come. This is the pulverized World Trade Center dust that had settled several inches of it. I say this because shortly after this, this gentleman got up, uh, President of the United States, George W. Bush. This is actually my photo of him. I was in that room at that time when he spoke. See the medals there on the table? I was on a committee to tell him who to give those medals to, the, the Presidential Medal of Science. And so he actually gave them to everyone we told him to give them to, except he didn't read their citations. He's smart enough to know not to pronounce any of the science words <laughs> that were in the citation. So he put the medal around the neck. Somebody else read the citations. Shortly after September 11th, he gets up. I don't remember where he gave the speech. And he says, in an attempt to distinguish we from they, he says, our God is the God who named the star." This is before I was on his Rolodex. You know, I could have saved him from himself, okay? It's a loose quote from Genesis that says God named all the stars in the sky, okay? First of all, it's the same God, so he's got that wrong. But, but Allah, God of Islam, and God of the, 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 the Jewish God, they all, it's the same God. They, they call them different names, but it's the same book delivering you the same God. Apart from him getting that wrong, he says, our God is the God who named the stars. What he, he, he just didn't know, two-thirds of all stars in the night sky have Arabic names. Two-thirds of all stars that have names, have, these are all the Arabic star names, all of these. I don't think this is the point he wanted to make. I, I don't think he figured that out. Like I said, it was before I was on his Rolodex. And so you say, well, how does this happen? How, does, how, do you get, how do you get a culture where, two, where stars in the night sky are named by them? What was going on? How did that happen? And you have to go back a thousand years and you get to Islam in what's the golden period of Islam. In that period, algebra was invented. Algorithm is an Arabic word. All these words, they begin with A-L. 10 to 1, it's an Arabic word. Arabic, our numerals are Arabic numerals. Did you pause and reflect on why we call them Arabic numerals? We just call them that, right? But somebody did good stuff with these numerals. It was in Baghdad a thousand years ago where they invented algebra. And there was advances in mathematics, agriculture, engineering, med, all of these fields. All at a time, when Europe was disemboweling heretics. So something changed. 12th century, this gentleman came around, Al-Ghazali, a Muslim scholar, learned. At this point, Islam is maybe just a few hundred years old. People are reading the Quran and interpreting it however they sort of want to and feel like it. There's not a coherence to the practice of Islam until he comes around and codifies the behavior of a good Muslim. 
In much the same way St. Augustine, in his book, Cities of God, codified what it is to be a good Christian. How do you burn the witches? There's a recipe for that. You gotta, they gotta be upside down so the blood does, you know. It's a whole, whole itinerary for how to be a good Muslim. And in, in his writings contain the assertion that the manipulation of numbers is the work of the devil. Two, actions that you see in nature are the will of Allah. Well, if you drop a stone and it falls, Allah willed that. If that's your explanation, your curiosity stops. You combine everything happening in nature being the will of Allah to the manipulation of numbers being the work of the devil, and the entire enterprise of that golden era collapses. Now, historians, when they look at that era, they say, well, the Mongols came and they, you know, so historians think of the world in terms of wars and kings. They think less about it philosophically, about intellectual movements or the absence thereof. Islam rose again after this period, didn't have science associated with it. No new inventions in math. You look at the period of Islam in Spain, the period where the great Al Alhambra was built. There is no attendant science going on there. It's done. It's gone. And it is a, it is a cost that exists to this day. There is 1.3 billion Muslims in the world today who are not participants on the frontier of scientific discovery. What's the best measure of this? Just check out the Nobel Prizes. I tallied them, okay? How many Jews have won the Nobel Prize? In the sciences, here they go. 25% of all Nobel Prizes in the sciences are won by Jews. How many Jews in the world? About 15 million tops, 15 million? How many Muslims in the world? 1.3 billion, which is huger, way huger than 15 million. How many Muslims have won the Nobel Prize in the sciences? Two and a half. Two. I can't bring myself to call economics a science. I'm sorry. I just, I just can't. I've tried. I've really tried. I'm sorry. That's how many. And the physics one was a Pakistani physicist, not a Middle Eastern physicist. So Jews have 50 times the number of Nobel Prizes. They're 180th of the population of the Muslims. It's 4,000 times the impact. I lose sleep every night wondering how many secrets of the universe lay undiscovered because one fifth what, no, one seventh, what's the population? One sixth of the population of the world is not a participant on the exploration frontier. What thoughts have gone undreamt of?